So what happens if you need to grade an HDR and SDR version of a project and render both of those out? Well, there are a few approaches you can take. One is to simply have two separate projects, an HDR project and an SDR project. However, that's going to make yourself a lot of extra work. After you grade the first one, you have to start over from scratch to grade the second. A better way is to start with one grade and then do a trim pass for the second grade. Therefore, you don't lose work and it's more efficient. So how would you do that in Resolve with a single project? One way is to use a semi-automated system such as Dolby Vision or HDR10+. And those systems allow you to store a trim pass as metadata along with your HDR render. And we'll look at those systems in more detail in later videos. If you're not using one of those systems, you'll have to do the work manually. So if you're going to do that, how would you approach it? It would be tempting to simply add a new node here and add some additional grading for the trim pass so it looks good in SDR. But that's a bit messy. It may be difficult to return to your HDR grade. A better way is to keep the HDR grade separate from the SDR grade. You could try to do that through versions right here in the color tab, but those will be linked to a single timeline. A better way is to create separate timelines. For example, you can copy your HDR timeline and make the copy the SDR version. Let's give that a try. I've gone back to my HDR grade project. This is saved out as a DRP you can import. And here we applied a quick grade to this HDR footage. While I'm thinking about it, I'm going to make a snapshot of this grade so we can use it as reference later. Within the viewer, I'll right mouse button click and choose grab still. And that places a still in the gallery. I'll go back to the media tab and select a timeline. I'll go up to edit, duplicate timeline. And I'll get an exact copy of the original timeline. And that includes all the nodes, modes, and grading. Just to be clear, I'm going to rename these timelines. Double click on the name. I'll name this original one HDR and the new one SDR. I'll go back to the color tab and work on my SDR version. Now I do need to make sure I'm on the correct timeline. There's a menu for it right here. So always double check that first. So before I start to do a trim pass, I need to think about a few important things. One is the project settings affect all timelines. So if I go back to my project settings, back to color management, I can see that the timeline and the output color space are still set to ST2084 with a 4000 nit limit. Now I can choose to switch the color spaces to an SDR variation such as Rec709. And that's fine, but you have to remember to switch it back to 2084 if you're going to return to the HDR timeline and make changes or say do renders. So let's think about another way to do this without changing this. If I leave it set to Rec2100 SD 2084, I could make it work if I apply a 3D LUT to my shot on the SDR timeline. Let's give that a try. I'm going to cancel to maintain the HDR color space. Then I'll add a new serial node here, Alt S. And here I'll apply a 3D LUT. Right mouse button click, LUTs, 3D LUT. And here you'll see a set of HDR ST2084 options. And these are similar to the ones you see with the 3D Viewer LUT. For example, I can choose HDR 4000 nits to Gamma 2.4. And then I'll have a suitable transform from HDR with a 4000 nit limit to SDR. Now when it's applied, it looks very similar to the 3D Viewer LUT we used earlier. Most of the frame is severely overexposed. And there's more contrast. And those overexposed areas are essentially above the 100 nit level. In fact, let's bring up our scopes one more time. You can see it's still set to the 0 to 10,000 nit range, and indeed we had that 4,000 nit limit. I'll move my nodes over and add one more serial node to keep everything separate. So now I have this new node, I'll go ahead and apply some grading to make this look a bit better. And again, I want most of the frame pushed down here below 100 nits. I'll start with my primaries, adjust my gamma, can also work my curve, return to my log controls, adjust the highlights, and continue adjusting this go to my split screen to take a look at my reference. 
So here on the right side of the frame is my reference frame. Left side of the frame is what I'm working with here. It won't be a perfect match because remember, this is a snapshot here of an HDR grade limited by the viewport. That can help in terms of figuring out the general direction to go. Looks pretty good. Can always change where my center line is by click dragging that. Turn it off for now. Okay, let's say that's a decent grade that will be suitable for SDR. Now we are still in that SD2084 space for the project, but I can go to the Deliver tab and choose a render format that's suitable for SDR. The point is I don't have to choose a format that supports HDR. Let's go back and take a look at another way to do this. I'll delete these two nodes, go back to my project settings, and instead of living in that SD2084 space, I'll go ahead and switch it to Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. And when I do this, it looks pretty hideous, very blue-gray, washed out. That's because we are in a SDR color space, Rec. 709, but we still have our HDR mode turned on. So if you do want to change the color space for the project settings, be sure to turn off the HDR mode for any node that has it. Once you do that, it'll look more reasonable. Then you can choose the color grade. Once again, I'll add a new serial node to not affect the initial grading. Then I can do my trim pass. I can choose to change the scope range back to 10 bits. Values now fill up the entire area because we're on Rec. 709. In other words, we're not limited by 4,000 nits. In any case, let's go back up to DaVinci Resolve, go to Preferences, User tab, Color section, and turn off Enable HDR Scopes for ST2084. And this will be for the entire project. So if you do need to return to HDR at some point, you might have to turn this back on. But for now, I'm going to turn it off and save. And now I can grade using that 10-bit range. So I'll apply a few quick adjustments here. You can always compare it to my HDR snapshot. Offset that slight blue-green that I had in the shadows originally. And then once I'm happy with the grade, choose to render it out. And once again, since I'm already in SDR space, go to the Deliver tab and choose an appropriate format for SDR. Once you have a separate SDR timeline, you can choose to stay within that SD2084 color space and use a 3D LUT to make the conversion to SDR or simply change the timeline up a color space for the project settings to an SDR space so you don't have to use a 3D LUT. So with a little careful thought, it's actually not too hard to have an HDR and an SDR grade. Now keep in mind as I am doing this grading, I'm doing it fairly quickly. Feel free to spend more time and use a different set of controls. Also keep in mind that if you are grading HDR and SDR on a project, it's best to have an HDR and an SDR monitor hooked to your system. Now again, there are automated systems such as Dolby Vision and HDR10 that can make your life a bit easier, and we'll look at those systems in more detail in later videos. For now, I'm going to move on and touch upon grading inside ACES as opposed to RCM. We'll do that in the next video. If I like to take a look at this project in its current state, it's saved out as HDR, SDR, DRP.